We as a culture are having a crisis in loneliness and burnout. The antidote to that, and we hear this a lot, is empathy and compassion. I so agree with that. Before the pandemic, I thought I was a very empathetic and compassionate person. But what I've learned is a whole nother level of empathy that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. You know, a lot of times in the workplace, what happens is when we're called to be empathetic, when, when somebody is really going through some stuff, and by the way, empathy is defined as really understanding and being with a person in their feelings. A lot of times in the workplace, what happens is we feel this push, which is actually conflict. And so I, I kind of see empathy as a very subtle form of conflict mastery. What kind of conflict does needing to be empathetic bring up for people? Okay, so the, the first one that I notice is that when we witness that somebody's in distress, something's really challenging for somebody, what we want to do a lot of times is fix it. We want, it, we want their feelings to go away, and so we try to fix it. What happens when you do that is you really deny the other person's reality, and that used to be a very acceptable thing in business. It's backfiring now, and so, and I'm a problem solver, so I get that, and I know my first thing is, this, okay, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do to change this thing? But the beginning point is just being present and hearing somebody what they're going through and creating that space. Another thing I think that we do is we tend to be in a hurry. When we're in business, it's like we don't have time to deal with feelings right now. We gotta, we gotta jump in and meet these deadlines. And the fact is, is that is true, and I don't deny that, but there's also the fact that if you have to end up dragging someone along um, because they're not present, they're not there, then you're, you're cutting yourself off for the long run for trying to get a short-term win. So really taking that time to be present with somebody, hear them out, and they're much more likely to be able to re-engage with you. And then the third thing I think that happens is that we want to explain to the person why they shouldn't feel that way. Because, you know, you are so talented, you shouldn't feel that way. You've got such opportunity, you shouldn't feel that way. You know, this will, this will pass, something else will come along. So we try to justify to that person why they shouldn't feel that way. So those are three things that I think are really prevalent. And so why is it so difficult? I know for me in the past, I thought if I really joined a person where they were, I get sucked into the to the darkness. But the truth is, it's, that's not true. And if you can meet a person where they are and really hear them, you actually shine some light on a pathway to a different place. And it can be really awesome, not just for them, but for you as well. The words are very simple, which is, tell me how this is impacting you. Let me, you know, tell me what's going on for you. And just listen. You don't have to have an answer because sometimes people just need to express what they've got. And of course, you need to have a trusted partner to be able to do that. And that's a whole nother part of conflict mastery. So that's it for this time. And thank you for tuning in. And I'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.